From New Hanover County Schools Television. Three-time Blue Ribbon winner for the North Carolina Schools Public Relations Association for Outstanding Electronic Media. This is your school news. Welcome to your school news. I'm Lauren Ricks. And I'm Keelan Ferrari Brown. Topping our newscast this week, International School at Gregory holds open house and tours. Bradley Creek Elementary joins the conservation caper and the district's first Twitter chat was a big success. Our top story this week. The International School at Gregory has been getting rave reviews and more and more parents have heard the buzz. To help parents learn more about this exciting new magnet school, an open house and tour was held. With a complete report as YSN reporter Bobby Blue. Meeting in the media center, a cross section of parents from throughout the county came to the International School at Gregory to learn about the school's dual immersion program. All the individuals who manage the wide range of programs at the school were there to talk with parents. One question that always comes up is how are we going to teach them English and Spanish and them not get behind? Um, and my answer to that is students are like sponges. When they're young, that's the time, that's the prime opportunity for them to learn those two languages. Um, the languages are taught simultaneously together. Um, so even though the pace of the learning might not be the same as other kindergarten, by the time they're in second grade, they're already up at the same level or surpassing their peers. The open house was more than just a presentation event. Parents also got a chance to go into a variety of classrooms and see firsthand how the school operates. They were given an opportunity to talk with teachers and students about the school and how the school operates each day. Because I can talk all day long about how great it is, you can go on the website, you can go to viflearn.com, you can um, do your own research, but until you actually see our kids in action, um, participating, um, speaking the language, being, becoming biliterate, um, that's, our best, that's our best seller. Parents in attendance learned that the Gregory program serves both native speakers of English and Spanish. The content for students K through 8 is conducted in Spanish one day and English the next day, alternating between two teachers. All students receive the Common Core and Essential Standards curriculum as decided by the state of North Carolina. Um, and I think by the time when parents come out and get the information, they're eager to get in the classrooms and actually see the kids at work. So I do encourage all parents that are interested to come out. Please spread the word. We would like a diverse pool of kids. The open house and tour was a great opportunity for interested parents to have their questions answered and absorb the feel for just how the international school works. With word spreading about Gregory's dual immersion program, slots at the school are disappearing and informed parents will be in the best position to secure a place for their child. Reporting for Your School News, this is Bobby Blue. Over the course of a morning, the students in Mr. Sudek's marine science class performed an amazing array of environmental assessments, including water quality testing, vegetation assessment, and species counts along a living shoreline in Stump Sound area. During the time in, a f in the field, they received a one-of-a-kind lesson on the history of oysters and their importance to the area for habitat, water quality, and local economy. Students learned that over time, Natural banks and shorelines can experience erosion from resulting from a variety of stressors, including wave energy, human impact, and removal of vegetation. Living shorelines are the, mo are the preferred method for shoreline restoration in North Carolina. Following their time along the water's edge, Harvard students returned to the classroom from a present for a presentation from the Coastal Federation. The North Carolina Coastal Federation empowers coastal residents and visitors from all walks of life to protect and restore the water quality and critically important natural habitats of North Carolina coast. Students at Bradley Creek Elementary were informed that energy was being wasted everywhere they looked. However, they shouldn't worry because Nikki Neutron and the Energized Guys were there to help. It was the Conservation Caper, a program designed to engage elementary students in green living and saving energy. During the 25-minute educational play, 
Nikki took on Dr. Maybe, a villain bent on wasting water and energy, and showed the students at Brad Bradley Creek how they can do their part to save energy. In fact, students and staff at Bradley Creek were invited to join the conservation caper and help save 10 million kilowatt hours of energy during the 2016 through 2017 school year. The wonderful production offered not only an audience engaging play, but digital educational materials, games, and activities for the classrooms in the school. Plus, the cast gave away energy kits to every student for their homes. Finally, New Hanover County Schools Superintendent Dr. Tim Markley and members of the New Hanover County School Senior Leadership Team hosted the district's first Twitter chat last month. The chat provided an opportunity for students, employees and community members to post their questions and learn information about a variety of topics, such as the 2014 Bound Progress 2017 to 18 enrollment and the new CTE High School. Followers also had the chance to post questions and comments about other topics. The new CTE High School generated the most interest among audience. The next NCHS parent chat via Twitter will be held on February 2nd and begin at 7 p.m. Twitter chats are open to the public and anyone with a Twitter account can participate. Now, when your school news continues, we have an exciting lunch menu forecast. Plus, coming up in 60 seconds, we'll have reports on Anderson Students Learn Internet Safety, Ashley Teacher, one of the 30 in the state to win history grant, and Laney Students return from romanticism on the deck of the USS North Carolina. This is Your School News, on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. Don't go away, we'll be right back. Lace up the cleats, put on the pads, and tape up those ankles. The football edition of Sports Roundtable is back for its 17th season on the Learning Network. I'm Joe Catanacci. If you're a high school football fan, then join me for Sports Roundtable. We feature the area's most in-depth look at local 4A gridiron action. From a strong defense to an explosive offense, we spotlight it all on the Sports Roundtable. Each week, you'll get a first-hand account of all the plays from New Hanover County Schools' four head football coaches. It's the Sports Roundtable, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., right here on the Learning Network. Sports Roundtable is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza, Sam's Club, and PortCityDaily.com. They'll test you. Try to break your will. But however loud the loudness gets, however many cheese puffs may fly, you're the driver, the one in control. Stand firm. Just wait. And move only when you hear the click that says they're buckled in for the drive. Never give up till they buckle up. Welcome back to Your School News. The students at Anderson Elementary were visited by members of the Wilmington Police Department. The guests were part of the department's NetSmarts program. NetSmarts is dedicated to ensuring the safety of children online and offline. By using resources such as videos, games and activities, the goal of NetSmarts is to educate children on how to recognize a potential threat, engage children and adults to have a conversation about on and offline safety and empower students to prevent themselves from being exploited. You have to be safe on what you post and you have to think twice about everything. I learned that like if someone's saying mean things about you or posting inappropriate pictures you should block them un or unfriend them and tell a parent right away. Today's social media is a big part of everyday life here, this, how, with this, however, comes a lot of cyberbullying. The Wilmington Police Department taught the students how to handle cyberbullying by ignoring mean comments, blocking it, the sender and then telling it a trusted adult about the situation. Students were also taught what personal information should never be shared at such a young age, address, email or school. At the end of the presentation, the students at Anderson Elementary promised to, one, Always tell a trusted adult 
if something online makes them feel sad, scared or confused. Two, ask trusted adults before sharing personal information online. Three, not meet up face to face with anyone on the internet. And four, to always use good etiquette and to never be rude online. In other news, what are you doing for others is the theme of this year's Martin Luther King Jr. essay and poster contest. For those students interested in participating, you can turn in your entries at the Cape Fear Museum by 5 p.m. on December 15th. Cash prizes will be awarded to first, second, and third place winners in each grade level. The contest is open to elementary, middle, and high school students. PTA presidents in all the schools have been in contact history and English teachers at your school. Those teachers should have all the entry information and rules. If, however, no one in your school has the contest information, you can call 910-528-2857. Remember, the deadline for this contest is December 15th at 5 p.m. Mrs. Lindsay McDermott from Ashley High School was awarded a grant given to only 30 teachers in the whole state. The grant allowed her to go live and study, go and study with top-notch historians and educators in Kalawi at North Carolina Center for Advancement of Teaching. Participants took on the in-depth topic of the Holocaust and had the heartbreaking experience of listening to the story of a Holocaust survivor and getting him to sit and talk with him about his whole life experience. The grant was also awarded the grant also awarded Mrs. McDermott with hundreds of dollars worth of Holocaust resources and a paid substitute during the four day session. Connecting something in our own backyard with a unit on romanticism was Laney High School English teacher Miss Jones's goal when she took her class on a field trip to the USS North Carolina. The class had been studying the artistic, literary, musical, and intellectual movement that originated in Europe toward the end of the 18th century. That style was captured by the American poet Oliver Wendell Holmes when he wrote Old Ironsides. Students were cha charged with writing a similar poem in style and composition about the battleship. Students paced the decks of the ship, explored her hold, and worked in groups to try and create the same rhyme of the classic poem. Students at the same time had to capture that sense of romanticism, of movement that took the world by storm in and still has an impact on today's society. Now don't go away. Coming up, we have the lunch bill affair. Plus, an education index, demonstrators march in Poland over sweeping education reform. And check out these trending stories on the school system website. Holgate High School honored at the 2016 NCTC High School Play Festival. Elementary singers to participate in honors chorus and school systems plan plans future Twitter chats after successful launch. Your school news continues after the break. Don't go away. I'm Maggie Cottle. And I'm Allison Helms. Join us this week for the morning show. Start your mornings off with our outstanding and incredible features. This week we celebrate Human Rights Day with a special video explaining what exactly human rights are. We also have a new episode of A Plus Teachers. We sit down with Freeman Elementary School's Teacher of the Year, Ms. Ruth Pitstick. And I'm Tyler Belson. I have the latest year school news in the morning show. Wrightsville Beach Elementary celebrated their Blue Ribbon Award and I have all the details. We also have this week's lunch menu, our hilarious joke of the week, and morning show map. So join us for the morning show weekday mornings at 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. and weekends at 10 a.m. right here on the Learning Network of the Cape Fear. Welcome back to Your School News. It's time for our Education Index, a look around the nation and the world at some of the top stories in education. Topping the index, more girls are taking the advanced placement exam in computer science, but there are still several states where girls lag far behind boys when it comes to this subject. That's one of the chief findings of a state-by-state -state analysis of the newly released data from the College Board by Barbara Erickson, the Director of Computing Outreach and a Senior Research Scientist at the College of Computing at Georgia Tech. This year, 54,379 students took the AP Computer Science exam in the United States, a 17% increase over 2015. 
of the U.S. test takers, 23% were girls. That's up from 22% last year. But in eight states, fewer than 10 girls took the exam, and Mississippi and Montana didn't have a single female take the exam. President-elect Donald Trump has nominated Betsy DeVos, a billionaire Republican donor who for decades has pushed to expand charter schools in her home state of Michigan to be his Secretary of Education. In picking DeVos, education experts say Trump is likely committing to his plan to encourage states to give poor students vouchers that would help them pay for private schools, a proposal championed by the GOP and opposed by Democrats who say such programs damage the public education system. Lily S. Kelson Garcia, president of the National Education Association, said DeVos has consistently worked against efforts to make a high-quality education available to every child. Meanwhile, former Florida government Jeb Bush, a frequent Trump critic who has made education reform a key issue in his career and campaigns, called DeVos an outstanding pick. Finally, some education news from overseas. In Poland, more than 50,000 demonstrators, among them local government officials, politicians, education employees, scientists, parents, students, and representatives from more than a dozen non-governmental organizations participated in mass demonstrations for no chaos in schools. The demonstrating people were protesting against the changes proposed by the Minister of National Education. These changes call for abolishing lower secondary education and the extension of primary school education from six to eight years and upper secondary education from three to four years. Polish parents are undoubtedly concerned by both the scope and method of the introduced changes and how or if they will have a negative impact on their students' education. And that's this week's Education Index. A quick look at some of the interesting education stories from around the nation and world. Now, don't go away. We'll be right back with the Lunch Bill O'Fair. This is Your School News on cable and online. Look for our blue logo for all the latest news online at www.nhcs.net. this hard, graduating can be even harder. But you can help Jose and the students in your community make it through by visiting BoostUp.org. Seven thousand high school students drop out every school day. Let's catch them before it's too late. To start helping students in your community, visit BoostUp.org. Welcome back to Your School News. It's now time for this week's Lunch Bill Fair. Our guest lunch reporter, Ivan Santiago, he, he joins us now with this week's school lunch menu. So parents, students, teachers, and everyone working with the New Hanover County school system can plan their lunch options. Thanks. December is Tropical Fruit Month. All month long, we'll be talking about tropical fruits and what they're good for. But first, let's check out what your cafeteria is serving for lunch. On Tuesday, December 6th, choose from a chicken and waffles, a Salisbury steak with a biscuit, or a buffalo chicken pizza. On the side, we have red skin mashed potatoes with gravy, California vegetables, garden salad, mixed fruit, and fresh fruit. On Wednesday, December 7th, choose from three great entrees, buffalo chicken wrap, corn dog nuggets, or a bacon cheeseburger. Our side items include pasta salad, glazed carrots, garden salad, applesauce, and fresh fruit. On Thursday, December 8th, you have a choice of either beefaroni with a breadstick, chicken fajita with Spanish rice, or a chicken filet sandwich. On the side, we have great northern beans, veggie cups, garden salad, diced peaches, and fresh fruit. On Friday, December 9th, finish your week off with mouth-watering popcorn chicken and a roll a delicious meatball hoagie, or a savory pork chop sandwich. On the side, we have macaroni and cheese, broccoli with cheese, garden salad, diced pineapples, and fresh fruit. For the weekend, I've got my healthy tip. Even if you eat regular meals during the day, there will be times in between when you feel hungry, 
especially if you have been very physically active. Snacks can fill the gap. There are lots of different snacks available. Your choice may be a handful of fresh or dried fruits, sticks of vegetables, unsalted nuts, or rice crackers. Whichever snack you enjoy, remember, it is always good to include a variety of different types to keep things in balance. After the weekend, start your week off by enjoying a delicious chicken parmesan sandwich, a beef taco with Spanish rice, or a cheeseburger. On the side, barbecue pinto beans, garden salad, frozen fruit cup, and fresh fruit. As we celebrate Tropical Fruit Month, let's talk about the banana. First introduced into the United States in 1876, bananas are one of the most common and healthiest fruits today. Bananas are perfect for athletes as they provide our bodies with energy and are full with high amounts of fiber. They have also been used to alleviate joint and muscle pain. Now let's review this week's selection. You've got some great entrees to choose from. On Tuesday, we have a savory Salisbury steak with a biscuit. Wednesday, enjoy a buffalo chicken wrap. Thursday is our chicken fajita with Spanish rice. And finally, on Friday, finish your week off with a meatball hoagie. That's what's on slate for lunch at your school's cafeteria. So don't miss any of these nutritious, delicious, and healthy meals. From the newsroom, this is Ivan Santiago, back to you. Thanks, Ivan. Don't forget, you can also catch the Lunch Bill Affair during the morning show here on the Learning Network and get lots of healthful, nutritional information online at www.nchs.net slash nutrition. Now don't go away. Coming up next is the most amazing way to learn since the invention of sliced bread. It's called the walking classroom. We've got all the details next on your school news. If you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet, so bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. Lace up the cleats, put on the pads, and tape up those ankles. The football edition of Sports Roundtable is back for its 17th season on the Learning Network. I'm Joe Catanacci. If you're a high school football fan, then join me for Sports Roundtable. We feature the area's most in-depth look at local 4A gridiron action. From a strong defense to an explosive offense, we spotlight it all on the Sports Roundtable. Each week, you'll get a first-hand account of all the plays from New Hanover County Schools' four head football coaches. It's the Sports Roundtable, Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. right here on the Learning Network. Sports Roundtable is made possible with the support of Papa John's Pizza, Sam's Club, and PortCityDaily.com. Welcome back to your school news. The students at Winter Park engaged in a fit and knowledgeable activity this week called the walking classroom. The program is simple. Students take 20 minute walks ranging a mile to two miles as a class. Every student is equipped with an audio device with a custom academic podcast preloaded into the device. The podcasts directly align with the fourth and fifth grade common core curriculum, but the content is appropriate from grades three through eight. Each podcast begins with a brief health liter literacy message for the students to contemplate and review later. Walk around the whole school twice and we're listening to the podcast. Depending on what topic it is, we've listened to weather and Greek and Latin roots and some other topics. And when we come back in the classroom, my, our teacher asks us, um, a couple of questions about the podcast um, and what we've learned and what our favorite part was and then we take a quiz. Um, we learned um, about word, we learned about new words and where they came from, how they were like invented and um, who made them and also about like famous people from like the past um, who like made history. I enjoy hearing about it, stuff that I don't really know about, and um, walking around the, the field. 
With over 100 podcasts and more in development, the walking classroom method can be taught year after year. With the obvious health benefits from the walking, there is still confirming research between exercising and cognitive, cognit cognitive functioning. Students return back to the classroom with better moods, better determination, and drive to learn, resulting in higher standardized test scores. In children with low academic achievement and children with alternative learning styles such as ADHD, dyslexia, they are given an innovative tool to process and retain information better. Winter Park's walking classroom program is a creative and fresh take on traditional learning being used in communities across America. That does it for this edition of Your School News, recapping some of your main stories. International School at Gregory held open house and tours. Bradley Creek Elementary joined the conservation caper and the district's first Twitter chat was a big success. And we have something to tell you. This is Keelan's last time with us as he'll be returning back to Australia where he's originally from. So can you tell us where exactly you're from and what language you speak there? Um, we speak Australianese, which is a combination of Dutch and English. Um, and we, I come from Melbourne in Australia. Cool. So did you enjoy your time here? Yeah, it was cool. All right, awesome. Well, remember, your school news is on cable and online. And don't forget to start your morning with our light and lively morning show, weekdays at 6 a.m. I'm Lauren Ricks. And I'm Kieran Fry Brown. On behalf of the entire YSN crew, thanks for watching New Hanover County Schools TV on the Learning Network. Have a great day.